Hey folks, David Stewart here. I am back. It's time to talk about time travel in movies, books, comics, whatever story mediums you like to consume. I got tagged on Twitter with this question, which time travel theory do you subscribe to? Terminator, one reality, change the past, change the future. It's not completely accurate if you look at all the Terminator movies. Back to the future, alternate timelines. Again, not completely accurate with Back to the Future. Butterfly Effect, changes in the past ruin the future, or 12 Monkeys can't change the past no matter what. The actual only answer that is completely logically consistent is 12 Monkeys. I'll explain why in a second, but before I explain, let me wax poetic a little bit on um, time travel stories in science fiction. It's a really classic trope. It goes back to the 19th century with the time machine and maybe even before. Um, it's always interesting from a story perspective because normally we think of event sequences happening in order. But when you introduce time travel, you can have event sequences happen out of order. You can have really surprising things which are explained later on using time travel. Um, now, that can create some interesting effects, but it can also create some get out of jail free cards, if you will. So if you do something bad in a plot and you have time travel, then you can go back and change um change the past and i expect that to happen with you know certain movies that are coming up specifically infinity war uh part two um i'm expecting them to have some sort of time travel thing that will bring back a whole bunch of people that they haven't really milked in the franchise enough for them to just be uh dead and gone forever um it will also be necessary to correct uh, episode nine, <laughs> right? They're going to have to time travel back in time and eliminate episode eight and then have a new movie is what they ought to do. Um, but it, it is one of these things that can create stories where the plot is, is incoherent and surprises happen really for no reason. Like time travel can be a get out of jail free card. So you have to be careful with it. For me, it's a trope that I've used in my stories. Uh, I wrote a short story a while back called, uh, a regular temporal probability where this guy's studying an object where time moves backwards through it. And he's explaining essentially this, this 12 monkeys paradox, um, which is that time travel can't include paradoxes, any kind of um, movement through time going backwards in time or forwards through time um, that can exist. Uh, so it's, it's kind of an interesting little uh, story that I wrote to explain my thoughts on it. Uh, I, I, I do use time travel in a way in my sci-fi book prophet of the god seed but this is time travel where you only go forward in time and you do it through time dilation if you travel close to the speed of light or at the speed of light time slows down or stops if you're at the speed of light so as you approach the speed of light time slows down from your perspective a lot but time out in the regular galaxy goes on so um, you know it may take a hundred years to travel from one star system to another star system because it's you know close to 100 light years away and because it takes 100 years to do that, uh, then your time that you are experiencing on the ship because you're traveling close to the speed of light slows down so that it, you know, the, the, the journey takes a couple of months, a couple of weeks for you to get from one star system to the other. But because of the distance between them, 100 years have passed. So everyone you knew on the planet that you left is dead and gone at that point. Um, so when you leave one planet and travel to another, you're leaving behind literally every human being you could have known on that planet. So I use that as a, as a jumping off point in this story to think about how the culture of people who travel through the stars would necessarily evolve in given, given those constraints. So in reality, the only real culture and family are the people who travel through the stars and the people who are planet side are, you know, they're their descendants, they're things like that. The cedars are the people who actually travel and they carry everyone that's important with them uh, rather than leave them behind on the planet because you know that as soon as you leave a planet, every person that you met on that planet, you will never meet again. They'll grow old, have families die uh, before you can ever get back to that planet and see them. So with that constraint, it created a whole set of, of character interactions that I thought were very interesting. Um, so when I was developing the universe with um, with my friend Matt, and when I wrote the book, that was that was uh, an interesting limitation of time travel that created some cool story effects. So I tend to avoid this sort of time travel that um, where you can go back in time and change something, and then you, you go back to the future and things are different. That's like back to the future, which is like you go back to the 1950s, you change some stuff, you come back to 1985, and things aren't as you remember them. 
all right, you've actually created a little bit of, uh, of a time paradox. Um, time paradoxes are, here's an easy way to explain one. If you travel back in time and kill yourself, you've created a time paradox, right? Because in order for you to be existing to go back in time to kill yourself, you have to have not been killed. Um, so if you travel back in time and shoot yourself in the head, you've created what's called the time paradox. Now, time paradoxes can't happen. Um, so in that example, that action prevents you from traveling back in time and doing it, meaning the action wouldn't have happened. It's an Im it's a literal impossibility because it's a paradox, just like really any other kind of logical paradox. So the 12 monkeys answer, the reason that you can't change the past no matter what, is that if you were in a reality where you were able to travel back in time, that reality contains all instances of backwards time travel already in it. All the instances of backwards time travel that you can you can do are already contained in the reality where you are traveling backwards in time, meaning as soon as you travel backwards in time, you are essentially fulfilling an event that already happened. You're fulfilling a destiny, like you're predestined to do it, although you won't realize it. You'll think that you can change the past, but in reality, you can't because, like I said, all all changes to the timeline are already included in any, real, any reality where you can travel backwards in time. There's... Um, you know, so because that's a, a strong limitation from my point of view, the only kind of time travel that can happen is one where the paradoxes are already included in the reality or one really without time paradoxes. So if you say, I'm going to travel back in time and kill Hitler, you literally can't because your desire to travel back in time and kill Hitler comes from the reality where Hitler did not get killed by time travelers. Uh, and so because you're from the reality where Hitler did not get killed by time travelers, because no other reality can exist with Hitler in it, if you were to go back in time and kill Hitler, you wouldn't have the motivation to go back in time and kill Hitler. You've created a time paradox, and almost anything you do, kind of like with the butterfly effect, creates some sort of paradox that creates profound uh, like effects in the future. So um, if you could create a time travel device, you're like, I am going to go back in time and I'm going to kill Hitler, and I'm going to see if this is true, you won't be able to kill him. Or your attempt to kill him will facilitate something major that happened that you didn't realize that you were you were a part of and to me that would be an interesting piece of of a story writing let's go back in time let's kill hitler turns out our attempts to kill hitler merely you know merely drove him insane enough to 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 uh to kill a whole bunch more people uh and it's like oh good job you know you've you've created the hitler that you wanted to destroy you helped create it and also that makes me think of something else. It's like, if you could go back in time and kill Hitler, why don't you go back in time when he's a child and just abduct him? Then you don't have to murder anyone, you know, or teach him to not be a not be who he became. Um, but you can't do those things because uh, your reality where you time travel can't include paradoxes that would alter even your motivation for time traveling or anything like that. So anyway, that's some things to think about with time travel. I think it's a it can be a cool story device, but I'm always remembering the problem with paradoxes. And in Terminator 2, there was a big one. So they changed the way it goes, right? They're going to destroy... They're destroying the chip that traveled back in time. The, the Terminator traveled back in time in the first movie was crushed. Turns out his computer inside his head was used by this corporation to create what would become Skynet, meaning the time travel created the events that led to the Terminator even being created in the future. It's completely paradoxical. So you can't actually have something like that exist. You can't have a time-traveling robot go back in time and impart his technology to someone in the past, which then creates the time-traveling robot in the future. That would be a paradox as well. So the entire setup for, for Terminator and Terminator 2 doesn't really make a lot of sense, although I do have a lot of affection for those movies, I suppose. And the, the problem with Terminator 2 is they were like, well, we're going to change the way it goes. We're going to change the future. It's like you wouldn't be able to because this thing, that future has to happen for this thing to to exist in your current present situation it becomes a paradox. So anyway, let you know, let me know what you think about time travel. Um, I've seen it a whole bunch in Star Trek. One of the cooler things in Star Trek before, before I, I let you go, it was actually in Voyager, um, which is usually not people's favorite series, but they had a ship that existed somehow outside of time. They created this, this idea and they were constantly trying to do a bunch of stuff to restore this timeline that they lost where like the planet was destroyed and this guy was obsessed with bringing about the the proper timeline where his wife was still alive and then they destroy the time ship and by destroying the time ship because it existed outside of time it restored the timeline 
and eliminated a paradox and it was like the episode never happened which is really bizarre and they actually did that a couple times in voyager they did they did that with one where a planet's been obliterated by by using this really dangerous kind of energy this like I don't remember what what kind of energy energy they use, and they get stuck in these like time rifts, and they figure out they're the ones that set off the chain reaction that blows up the planet in the past. And then so they tell the whoever stuck in the past, they're like, "Don't you know? Turn off your your little beam emitter thing that's helping us to get you out of the past because that's what blows up the planet." And as soon as he stops doing that, none of the events ever happened. The paradox, like the you know you the waveform collapses, the paradox never happened. The next scene, they're flying by it, and they're like, oh, you know, there's an interesting system. It's like, oh, they, they haven't invented warp yet. They're too primitive. We're going to pass right by. So it was like the episode never happened. That's a really weird thing to think about, um, but it's the only way that paradoxes can really resolve is that they never actually happened. So let me know what you think down below. Give me your opinions. Of course, I'm correct, and any other opinion would be incorrect but if you feel like putting an incorrect opinion um down in the in the comments you can or just um let me know what you think about what kind of stories you like in time travel um if you want to think about it that way because there's a lot of possibilities when you introduce the idea that events don't have to happen in a particular order it really frees things up so let me know what are your favorite time travel stories um do you like any of the time machine movies um do you like Back to the Future for for more than uh, you know just its its aesthetics and things like that? I'll see you guys next time, and uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff. Um, have a good one.